What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. For those of you that are new, my name is Dylan from DeJesus Custom Footwear. We run a YouTube page dedicated entirely to everything you need to know about custom sneakers. We feature tutorials, guides, tips and tricks, and a behind the scenes look at everything that we do when it comes to customizing sneakers. So if you wanna keep up with all the tutorials and great content that you can learn from, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. And for those of you that have already been subscribed already, welcome back, Brandon, Daniel, Omega, and all of our other loyal subscribers who comment and watch every single one of our videos. We greatly appreciate you guys. So for today's video, we wanted to dive a little bit into the business side of customizing sneakers and have a little bit of a business talk with you guys on how you can definitely make some more money when it comes to customizing sneakers. Whether you're just looking to do this on the side as a little bit of a side hustle or make a full blown career out of this, these four tips that we're gonna cover today will greatly help you. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first tip for you guys is gonna to be to put yourself out there. And what I believe you need to do is create a separate profile to create an online gallery and portfolio for you to be able to refer people to come and check out all of your work. After you have this done, anytime you create a new piece of content, you have a place to post it for new people to see and prospective clients to find you. So now that you have these profiles set up, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just sitting back and thinking that your phone's gonna start blowing up and everybody's gonna say, wow, look at this new customizer on the block. I need to get some work done by him you still need to do a little bit more work to really get your name out there. So I think there's a couple more things that you could definitely do that will really help get your name out there and start to help you become a no name in the industry. Another great thing that I think everybody should be doing who runs a sneaker customizing business is going to local sneaker events. Since most of the time businesses like this nowadays are run on social media, it's a great idea to actually get yourself out there and let people see that product in person. You'll also be able to network with countless people and people who have the same interest as you obviously sneakers and these are the people who are more willing to pay for a luxury item like custom sneakers. You really never know who you're gonna run into at an event like this and I really believe in creating your own luck, putting yourself in the positions to meet the right people and you never know who people are gonna know, who people are gonna refer you to and there's really nothing like people seeing your work in person. And even if they themselves may not be interested, they may know somebody who they would think would be interested in seeing your work. Let's say you did a specific team shoe, you had that on display they'll say, wow, I know a person who has an entire room dedicated as a shrine to this team or whatever. Or maybe they have a connection to a different celebrity athlete. They have a cousin who knows somebody, a cousin, aunt, uncle, wives, neighbors, friends. You never know what's gonna happen when you meet people. And this is a great idea to really get yourself out there and get your name known to people. The other thing that you absolutely can't be afraid to do is to reach out to people. Like the saying goes, sometimes you gotta shoot your shot in the DM. The worst thing that could happen is they don't reply to you or they say, no, they're not interested at this time but it's definitely a great idea to just send out a lot of DMs to people who you think may be interested in your work. At the end of the day, even though to a lot of people who may watch our page, custom sneakers may seem mainstream, but I promise you guys, I still meet people every single day who say, wow, I never knew this was a thing. I never knew people painted shoes. So anytime I'm meeting people in life telling them what I do, they're like, you paint shoes for a living? You know, I can't believe that. So there's always people learning about this. So you really need to get in front of as many people as possible. That's one of the most important things that we could try to pass on to you guys is you need to get in front of as many eyes as possible. And that's gonna lead us right into our next tip. So our next tip is gonna be trying to conquer all social medias. And this is a tip that I myself am super guilty of. It's super easy to just get lost and only really considering posting to Instagram and creating the content tailored towards that. But there's so many different social media sites out there that you can be really utilizing to find future clients. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. There's so many customizers who really only post to Etsy because there's so many people on this site daily that they're able to create sales off of. And so when posting to all these social medias and competing with other customizers, you really need to find a way to stand out in my opinion. So it's a great idea if you start to become known for a certain type of style. Maybe you become known for doing really good anime work like Serato, or you have a really unique, vibrant, contemporary style like Gato Value, where right away people can see a piece of work done by that artist and be able to instantly recognize it. And for us, one way that we've really tried to stand out over the years is really trying to brand everything when it comes to our business. We have our own sneaker boxes, our own tissue paper business cards, stickers, everything that you get from us is DCF branded. And over the years, I've really tried to own in on my own style. So like I said, when people see a piece of work done, they can instantly recognize and think, 
wow, that looks like a piece that was probably done by DCF. And people start seeing your work more and more, and finally, when they're ready, when that light goes off in their head and they say, okay, I'm finally ready to get a custom sneaker, they know exactly the artist they're gonna go to because you start to become known for a certain style. Another great thing that you could do across social media is really try to own in on certain niches. So let's say, for example, you did a Chicago Bulls themed shoe. One thing that you could do is definitely utilize all the Chicago Bulls hashtags on Instagram, and there's so many unique fan page groups across Facebook that I have found over the years, it's a great idea to post to these fan pages because these are people who are diehard fans and are willing to spend money on that gear merchandise where they can really represent their favorite team or whatnot. So after doing all these themes and different types of work for clients, it's super easy to fall into a creative rut of your own. So that's gonna lead us right into our next tip. So our third tip for you guys is gonna to be to create your own work. And like we said, after constantly doing other people's themes, following other people's ideas, it's super easy to feel really stuck in a creative rut to where you kind of start to think, wow, oh, I haven't done something that just really filled my soul in a while. So that's when it's a great idea to take a step back from that client work and just really create something for you. Something that you think is really gonna to add to your portfolio, add to your gallery, something that you think other people will enjoy seeing in the future, something that you think is gonna create you some future business because you think other people will like it. For example, one of my favorite shoes that I've done over the years is a shoe that I keep right here on display within one of our bookcases. I've always been super fascinated with tattoos and I love Japanese artwork, so one day I decided that I wanted to combine those two things, throw it on a sneaker, and just really challenge myself to create a Japanese tattoo inspired shoe. And this is definitely one of those shoes that people see and they come by and they go, wow, I, you know, I can't believe that you're able to combine these two things, Jordans and Japanese tattoo artwork that that's crazy you know what I mean so when people start to see that their brain starts flowing thinking okay you know I'm into this style of tattoo artwork so wow you could probably definitely do that on a shoe for me and it just starts to get their creative juices flowing too and something that I've noticed over the years within customizing sneakers is that it definitely goes through waves so when I first got started out everybody was doing the South Beach theme then it was the galaxy theme and then last year everybody wanted to do the sketch theme or the off-white theme. And these popular hype themes are ideas that you can do that are definitely gonna create you a lot more clients in the future because it's what people wanna see now. It's stuff that can possibly get reposted across social media. And at the end of the day, all these tips are really gonna be about getting more eyes onto your work in the future. And so as you start to get and take on more clients, this is gonna lead you to need to be able to keep up with that workload. So this is gonna lead us right into our final tip. So this is one of those things where you definitely can start to discover your own workflow over time. And I've definitely noticed over the years to help me increase my efficiency, something that I really like to do is if I know that I have to do 10 shoes in a week, five shoes in a week, 20 shoes in a week, I like to try and do everything at the same time. So when I know I have to prep all 20 of these shoes, I wanna do all my prepping at the same time, then I wanna do all my taping at the same time, then I wanna do all my airbrushing at the same time. And the reason for that is, let's say you're doing all your prepping, then you have all your sandpaper, all your scotch Brite pad, your cotton balls, your acetone, it's all nearby. You're able to do it all at once, right? When you move on to the taping, you have all your different tapes nearby. Then when you get on to your hand painting or airbrushing, you can have all your different airbrush ready paints nearby. And it's just gonna really increase your efficiency speed because you're not gonna go and clean up and put all this away and then need to pull it out after a couple hours, a day or so after you finish that other shoe, you're just gonna be able to start doing everything in a lot more efficient, almost assembly line-like style. And since everything is wanted so instantly nowadays by clients, sometimes it's really hard for them to understand that you may have a two-week wait period, a four-week wait period, a three-month wait period, but you really just need to be upfront and honest with those guys. You know, Even if it's not what they wanna hear at the time, it's much better to always respond to the clients, tell them exactly the truth. Let's say you told them upfront that it was gonna be a four week wake period. You could definitely expect a message from them after three weeks asking how we're doing. Is it looking like we're gonna be done that next week? And even if it's gonna be another three weeks or so, you still need to just be upfront, honest with them and tell them it's looking like it's gonna be another three weeks. I don't wanna sacrifice any quality on your pair. I wanna put that love, that TLC into each and every single pair. And over the years, as I've been involved in a lot of different custom sneaker groups, Facebook groups, um, just talking to a lot of different customizers in general, that's something that I've definitely noticed has happened with a lot of the people that have kind of been weeded out and realized this isn't for them. It's hard to run a business and keep up and constantly respond to clients, but the best thing that you could do is just be honest with everybody. Make sure you're responding to them. Not responding to them is definitely never the way to go, so just be upfront and honest with everybody about your weight 
skip periods and stuff and this is why building on your efficiency becoming more efficient is just going to help with that too because you'll be able to knock out stuff a whole lot faster in the long run and when it comes to workload and efficiency of course time is money So depending on where you are in your customizing career, some of these tips that we talked about in today's video may apply more to you so than others. Maybe you're absolutely killing it on Instagram and other social medias, but you're not going to any of your local sneaker events meeting future clients. Or maybe you're killing it on Instagram and Facebook, but you've never experimented with creating a YouTube page. And I can say for sure over the last year of experience alone, creating a YouTube page has just taken our business to completely new levels. And maybe you've been stuck in a super busy time period where you've been stuck doing client work for what feels like months and you haven't created something to really help fulfill your own creative desires in a long while, it'll be a great idea to step back and really do something for yourself because at the end of the day, you could be your own walking billboard when it comes to custom shoes. And lastly, you can't forget when running a business that time is money, so it's always a great idea to practice working on your efficiency without ever sacrificing quality. So I hope you guys enjoyed that business talk from us today, something a little bit outside of your normal tutorial or tips and tricks type video, but we hope you guys were able to take away something from today's video. If you haven't already, make sure you give the video a like, and if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you go ahead and do that. Turn notifications on so you don't miss a thing, and we will see you guys in that next video.